Leia here from LeiaFirstSci.com, and in this video, I'll take you through the reaction, a trick, and the mechanism for alkene epoxidation. You can find my entire series on alkene reactions, along with my alkene practice quiz, by visiting my website, LeiaFirstSci.com slash alkene reactions. The epoxidation reaction involves an alkene reacting with a per- oxy acid or simply a per acid to give you an epoxide. This reaction follows the syn addition pathway because the oxygen forms two bonds to carbon atoms forming a ring on the same plane either above or below where the pi bond used to be. But if you open that epoxide you tend to get an anti-addition for your final product such as a diol or something else which will be discussed in a video relating to opening of epoxides. The first thing to understand is the role of the per acid, or more importantly, what is that per acid? Per acid is short for peroxy acid. If you think back to peroxy, when you covered this in Gen Chem, you learned about peroxides, which has an extra oxygen, right? Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2 as opposed to H2O, which is water. In a peroxy acid, we have a molecule that looks like a carboxylic acid, so we have R, C double bound O, single bound O and an H, except that we have another oxygen between that OH. Oxygens are very unhappy when bound to other oxygen atoms, and that makes them very unstable and therefore very reactive. The two common peroxy acids you'll come across for this reaction is the peroxy acetic acid. Think of acetic acid, which is simply ethanoic acid or carboxylic acid with two carbons, Add another oxygen between the O and H, and that gives you your peroxyacetic acid. The next one that you'll come across in reactions is one that you have to recognize and know what it does, but you don't necessarily have to know what it looks like, and that is MCPBA. This stands for metachloroperbenzoic acid. This molecule has a benzene ring and a structure that looks like it will be a benzoic acid, which is a carboxylic acid off the benzene ring. We have a chlorine in the meta position, so we can put it here or here, doesn't matter. And finally, that per acid means we have that extra oxygen. Again, you don't have to know what this looks like, but you have to understand what it does. Now let's take a look at a trick for finding the stereochemistry of your product, and then I'll walk you through the mechanism step by step. If you start out with a cis alkene and you see that you have to react it with a per acid, all you have to do is X out the pi bond, draw an oxygen, and connect it with two lines. That's it. That's your product. However, if you have a trans alkene and you're reacting with per acid, you want to make sure that when you show your epoxide, you're showing the correct stereochemistry, specifically in this case that the two methyl groups are away from each other. The first way is to draw it exactly as I have the starting molecule, which isn't technically correct because it's hard to visualize the three-dimensional carbons forming that epoxide. Another way that you can show this is to have the epoxide in the plane and then have the two methyl groups anti to each other. So we can show one on a wedge, meaning it's coming out of the page at us, and the other one on dashes, meaning it's going away from us and therefore into the page. When it comes to the mechanism for epoxidation, most professors will not require you to know this. However, I highly recommend that you watch it at least once so that you understand it enough to apply shortcuts later on. So here we're given a very simple cis-2-butene, and we're reacting it with CH3CO3H. The key to recognize here is the CO3H. CO2H is a carboxylic acid. CO3H is a peroxy acid because we have that extra oxygen atom. I'm going to swap the colors and draw out the structure so that you can follow every atom and set of electrons carefully from start to finish. So here we have the peroxyacetic acid written out so that the bonds and electrons that are moving are all in different colors. I've also swapped the color of the pi bond so that you can see where those electrons wind up. Let's now take the peroxy acid and twist it to sit over the alkene so that the oxygen closest to the hydrogen is ready to react with the pi bond. 
The reaction that happens is considered a concerted mechanism so that all the electrons move around in a cycle at the same time, but we'll show it here one at a time so you can see what's going on. And the best part is, it doesn't matter where you start. We'll start this mechanism showing the alkene breaking its pi bond and using those electrons to attack the oxygen atom. At the same time, oxygen is going to use one of its lone pairs to attack the carbon atom, specifically the carbon atom that was abandoned by the pi bond. That means the carbon on the right still has those orange electrons. The carbon on the left would have been temporarily empty with a partial positive charge, and that's why the oxygen attacked over there. Now this is where it gets exciting. The oxygen is busy with the alkene and no longer wants to be attached to the other oxygen. So we'll show the pink bond between the two oxygen atoms breaking away from the red oxygen and potentially collapsing onto the green oxygen. But instead of staying on the green oxygen, it moves one step further and positions itself as a pi bond between the carbonyl carbon and the green oxygen atom. This means that carbon now has too many bonds, which means we have to break one of its bonds and therefore kick off the pi bond that sits between carbon and oxygen to sit on the oxygen atom. But again, it doesn't stay on the oxygen atom. Instead, it winds up reaching out for the hydrogen atom and forming a single bond between oxygen and hydrogen. Since hydrogen can only have one bond, when the oxygen grabs it, it must give up its other bond, and so the bond between hydrogen and the red oxygen will break and collapse as a lone pair onto the red oxygen atoms. So that's everything for the arrows. Now let's see exactly what this looks like by drawing every single atom where we see it, but taking into account all the new bonds and placement of electrons. We'll start with the alkene, which is still sitting in the cis position at the bottom. We have an orange bond on the right to the red oxygen atom and a red bond between oxygen and the left carbon. The oxygen atom also has a light blue lone pair, which it got from hydrogen, and it has one of its original red lone pairs of electrons. Now let's draw the atoms of the paracid where we saw it in the reaction. We have hydrogen, purple oxygen, carbon, green oxygen, and the CH3. The red and green oxygen used to be bound by the pink electrons, which now sits as a bond between carbon and the green oxygen. There is also that blue bond, which never moved between those two atoms. The green oxygen still has its two lone pairs. Looking at the carbonyl, we still have one of the two purple bonds. The oxygen still has its two lone pairs, but now there's a purple bond between oxygen and the hydrogen atom. And that's it. All our atoms and electrons are accounted for but it looks a little messy, so let's go ahead and redraw this. For the product that we care about, we simply have the former alkene, now with an oxygen bound to carbons 2 and carbons 3 for an epoxide, and the former paracid now has the CH3 with a carbonyl, a single bound oxygen and hydrogen giving us a carboxylic acid as our side product. Be sure to join me in the next video where I take you through the reaction mechanism and an awesome trick for the ozonolysis reaction. You can find my entire series on alkene reactions along with my alkene practice quiz by visiting my website layoffersci.com slash alkene reactions. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for resources and information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, then I have a deal for you. A free copy of my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry. Use the link below or visit orgosecrets.com to grab your free copy. After downloading your free copy of my ebook, you'll begin receiving my exclusive email updates with cheat sheets, reaction guides, study tips, and so much more. You'll also be the first to know when I have a new video or live review coming up. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up and share it with your organic chemistry friends and classmates. I will be uploading many videos over the course of the semester, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now to be sure that you don't miss out.